I finally bought another 3D printer. And I've been meaning to do this for a while. So the main reason really is to speed up my R&D projects. I've been struggling now for quite a while with the single printer. It's been difficult to keep up to date with my weekly project updates, especially when I have to print a lot of parts. You know, between CAD iterations and actually printing the stuff, it can take a few days sometimes. So another printer is really gonna speed that up. You guys know that I love my Prusa Mark 3S, and as nice as it would be to get another Prusa machine, I can't afford to splash out that much money on another printer at the moment. Also, it does have quite a limited print volume, and I'd like to get something that is a little bit bigger. I also thought this would just be a great opportunity to learn about another machine. So I had a look around and did quite a bit of research, and I came across the Creality CR10S. Now this machine is quite a few years old, but it's still regarded as one of the best value for money printers today. It's half the cost of a Prusa Mark 3S. Obviously it doesn't have a lot of the features like the auto bed leveling and you know a lot of the other software features that the Prusa has, but it still looks to be a fantastic printer. So what I'm going to do in this video is sort of do an unboxing, assemble the printer and just give you my first impressions from somebody who started with a Prusa Mark III. The printer arrived in this fairly large box and I also ordered the stabilization kit so I got this extra box with it. Basically it's just a couple of rods and some tools. As soon as you open the box you're greeted with the base and underneath there you've got the control box and also a toolbox which comes with a bunch of stuff that you need. And finally at the bottom you're left with a gantry and I have to say I'm really happy with the packaging of this printer. Here's everything out of the box, you can see we've got the toolbox, the gantry, the base and the control unit. In the toolbox you actually get a useful bunch of stuff. The first thing you notice is this decorative strip that they include. I didn't use this because I wasn't too fussed on it. In the box you get everything you need to get up and running. I was actually quite surprised how many useful things are included. You get all the tools you need to build the printer. You also get a scraper which is always handy to get your prints off the bed. You get an SD card, spare parts and they even threw in a reel of PLA which I thought was a nice touch. The printer was so easy to assemble. You start off with these T-slot brackets and they simply slide into the T-slots on the rails and you bolt them on. You do the exact same thing on the other side and you want to make sure that the nut is oriented in the correct direction so that it properly grips the T-slots when you tighten them up. From here you can position the gantry into place and then you can tighten up the rest of the bolts on the left and the right side and then you just add in the two M5 bolts on the underneath of the printer. The spool holder attaches to the control box using just two thumb screws and then you can just add on your spool of filament ready to print. As I mentioned at the start of the video I ordered the frame stabilization kit. This eliminates any movement on the Z axis when doing large prints. The assembly of this again was relatively straightforward, but I will say the instructions that came with the stabilization kit were really bad. The kit comes with a metal tap that you have to use to create the threads in the end of the T-slot rails. There was literally no guidance in the instructions on how to do this, so I looked up a YouTube video on how to do it properly and safely. Next job was to connect up the motors, and they're all labelled like this, so it's really hard to go wrong. All you have to do is gently push them into the correct sockets, and it really is as simple as that. This is the cable for the filament sensor and if you're going to use the filament sensor you're going to have to remove it from this socket and place it into the filament sensor device. The filament sensor then attaches to the printer by simply sliding it on. The power cables for the extruder and the heat bed fit into these sockets. There's also a thread lock on them so they can't pull out. There's also a switch on the power supply that lets you select your desired voltage. It's important that you get this correct. This is how the printer looks fully assembled and honestly I really like it, it's a sleek design. I did go against the blue ribbon, but that's just personal preference. The extruder has a nice design and the glass bed really looks great. Once everything was set up, I was able to switch on the printer and start the calibration process. So before calibrating, the first thing I did was remove all the plastic from the glass plate. I also removed the material that had been placed underneath the glass plate and I later found out that this had been placed there for a reason. The reason it's been placed there is to compensate for any uneven areas on the glass plate and it did turn out that I needed it to level the bed properly. Getting the bed leveled was nowhere near as difficult as I thought it was going to be. It's quite simple, you just use a little piece of paper and you adjust the wheels underneath until you feel a bit of drag under the nozzle. Again, the instructions were a real letdown here in terms of getting started from a software 
and a set up point of view. They're only designed to get the frame built and you're pretty much on your own at that point. A bit later on I found this really cool calibration pin. It basically just makes its way around the entire heat bed and you can level it as it goes and I found this really useful. Loading filament is a bit of a pain to be honest with you. You have to get it through the filament sensor then you have to squeeze the contraption on the top of the motor and push the filament through the gears. You then have to keep pushing the filament through all the way down the tube until you see it coming out of the extruder at the hot end. It was time to start my first print and I thought I'd print something that was already pre-loaded onto the SD card. As you can see from this footage I had a few issues initially getting anything to stick and getting the layer height correct. It was at this point that I realised that the material I had moved from the underneath of the heat bed from before was actually required in order to help level it properly. And you can see here I'm easily able to slide the piece of paper underneath the metal ruler. That means there's a little dip in the middle of the bed. Now this isn't great, you think they'd ship these with perfectly flat glass, but apparently that's more difficult than it sounds and a lot of people have actually replaced the glass beds with mirrors, so that's something I might look into as well. After putting the material back under the heat bed and recalibrating the bed levelling, I haven't had any problems since, it's been working great. After two failed attempts at the preloaded file on the SD card, I decided to set up my own custom printer profile for the CR10S in Prusa Slicer. I thought it'd be a great idea to use the classic 3D Benchy as a test, and this way I can compare it with my first ever print for my Prusa Mark 3S. I'll also be making a tutorial on how to set up custom printer profiles in Prusa Slicer, so subscribe not to miss that. With my 3D bench here ready to go, I started my first real test print, and I'll play a bit of footage here just so you can hear how the printer sounds and how it looks when it's printing. <laughs> So the print finished, and for a first print, this really isn't too bad at all. I've printed at 0.3mm layer height, and I've actually got here my original print that I did on my Prusa Mark 3S. For something that costs half as much as a Prusa, I don't think that's a very bad result at all. And remember, I haven't even dialed in my slicer settings properly yet. You can see that the font on the bottom didn't print very well, but I think that's due to the masking tape that I put down to help with adhesion. Have a look at these for a couple of seconds and let me know what you think in the comments below. Overall, I'm really impressed with this printer for the price. It's not perfect, the software's crashed on me a couple of times and if I had to be really picky, the filament is a real pain to load, the assembly instructions were awful and there's no real guide as to how to use the firmware or how to get the printer calibrated. Luckily there are places like YouTube where that information is easily available. The important thing is that the print quality is good and I haven't even dialed in my slicer settings properly yet. I'm going to keep using the printer over the next few months and I'm going to post a follow-up review down the road. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you've got any questions please leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.